That is ridiculously impressive. Well, definitely some impressive players on these teams. But the question is what happens in terms of teamwork? Impulse were slow starters on that front, but picked up towards the end of the split. Teammate still with the same lineup for these last couple of games. Let's try the first couple of games in the summer split. We'll see what happens with these guys. All right, so a couple of top lane bans here. Focus very early on. Uh, Impact has shown a very wide variety of champions up in the top lane. Yeah. Uh, so he will probably not be affected too heavily. Gragas also taken out in the jungle. Definitely, we've been over it so many times, the top right. tier junglers right now on Cinder Hulk. Well, the question is actually, as you talk about top tier junglers, Rush as a player is one, but last we saw him in the LCS, his pool was about two feet deep. You get like your ankles wet when you're in his champion <laughs> the pool. pool. Yeah, uh, he was really lackluster on the tanks like Sejuani and Nunu. And he kind of was hesitant to bring out the Lee Sin more than once in a while. So the question is, how has Rush now adapted a few months down the line now in the Cinder Hole? Yeah. Two of my favorite qualities that Rush has is really, really good work ethic. And he's also always theory crafting about the game. So I'm very excited to see what he comes back with. Because not only did he spend a lot of time grinding solo queue, mm -hmm. which is obviously great for your mechanics, um, but he spends a lot of time thinking about the game. So we'll see what, what they come back with after their break. And as the last few bans come out, these teams are almost just forced to blind pick what they think should be banned here. Apollo's Callista, Xiao Wei Xiao's Cassidin, the Rumble from Impact. Meanwhile, Cham, as you expect to see against Teammate, the Gragas, more likely a top lane ban than a jungle, the Maokai away from Kali Trolls as well. Yeah. And Slushi is ever terrifying LeBlanc. I have a feeling that we will be seeing some long range mages in the mid lane, Freak, with the Cassidin and LeBlanc both banned. Yeah. Uh, Natural you know, of Kogma. Exactly. Take your pick Kogma, Azir, Cassiopeia, even Karthus, maybe for Xiao and Xiao. Hey, man, maybe some fizz for someone else as well, just to push around people. <laughs> Early Rex he pick up. It. Uh, oh wow! What? Who blind picks Fizz? Uh, Westor <laughs> and Xiao Wei Xiao. Yeah, some people do. You're right about this. Some of the best midlaners in the world do this. But so Rex, I once again for Porpoise, one of his best champions throughout the spring split earlier this year. The early Alistair. Again, we are continuing to see this champion rise in popularity during the summer split professionally. Blind pick Fizz. All right. All right. So he's going to do it now. When you blind pick pick Fizz, you're looking at a very rough early lane phase and maybe a lot of jungler support. The thing is, you're picking it right into Rek'Sai, who is basically the queen of the early game now. Yep. That it is Cinder Hulk. She's really, really, she builds into Cinder Hulk very easily uh, and still has that very strong level three gank package that she can do after just one side of the jungle. So a bold move here from Xiao Xiao, as we are used to seeing from him nowadays. Yeah, uh, but I think his impact picked it. So apparently they all trusted him to blind pick the Fizz in the first place. Thresh coming in for Dodo, and the Urgot's going to be left to get locked in for Teammate. And as always, that is going to be a flex pick between Maple Street and Slushy. Teammate has another minute and a half to decide where, where those champions actually go. Yeah, so the Thresh and the Alistar both locked in already. I guess if we're going flex, you could still put Fizz in a different lane if you really want to. Yeah, Pat could play him. Um, but yeah, the Alistar, really strong front line. I like that. Uh, now that you can bring that from the support role, his ultimate is, uh, well, it's very good at creating yes. mid-game pressure just because you don't have to rely on building up items. As soon as you hit level six there, a lot of Ooh. presence from Adrian. I like that Evelyn is becoming popular for, for Rush's sake. I mean, she's a fun champion to cast, not so fun to play against, so maybe less so for me, but uh, Rush gets a, an aggro fighter sort of jungler fits his style exactly. I think it'll go well for him. Talk about putting pressure on the map. He, he, Rush doesn't even have to do anything <laughs> to actually make the Team 8 lanes play cautiously, especially since this is Rush behind the champion, who you're expecting to come out of at your face, maybe level 2, pull off some really aggressive early ganks. I feel like this champion just fits Team Impulse really well, and they have a lot of mind games to work around, and it actually opens up a lot of early game moves for them. Now, speaking of early game moves, the bot lane, mm. Alistair and Sivir definitely have a lot of fight potential. Shao Shao actually right now has teleport for a summoner as well, so you might see the entire team show up bot lane out of nowhere. Last few picks for teammate, they're having Huckram, they want Nar instead, and they're going to say Ziggs against Fizz is going to be just fine. Impulse can still flex pick that Fizz at the end of the day, though. Can, yes, can very easily be moved around. I like the uh, Ziggs pick up here. You're going to stand back. Uh, you don't have to worry too much about the Evelyn. 
Ziggs never really has to go past the halfway mark. And even if he does, you can hold on to Satchel Charge. Uh, you very rarely need to use that in lane unless you're looking for a kill. So very good all-around safe pick for Slushy, who has really been the point man for this team. Yeah, absolutely. Coming into the league, we talked all about Kali Trolls, uh, but really Slushy has been the big carry for this squad. Definitely agree. And, and uh, Ziggs, I think, one of the best champions for carrying. He's been overlooked a little bit. It seems the hype is around the Azir, the Cassiopeia, the Victor. But I do like Ziggs a whole lot as a nice, well-rounded mage. Uh, and, you know, the side lane wave clear can help a lot as well if the enemy team is prone to split push against you a whole bunch. You mentioned him being safe as well. And oh, it is... All right, they flex it. All right. Now, the Asua gets picked up once again for Xiao Wei Xiao. Impact is going to be top lane Fizz, but Fizz into Nar feels difficult. All right. What happens if all the way around, by the way? Most of these matchups feel difficult. OK, so if we're talking about flexing, you can still have a top lane Yasuo. In <laughs> all of these <laughs> all of these matchups really do depend on picking Evelyn as your jungler, because yeah. all of these matchups, you can play aggressively. You know, these are melee assassins. These are champions that if you can get an early lead, you can run over a lane. Uh, Yasuo is one of the best. If you get a lead for him in the longer lane especially, he can chase you down through that long lane using your own minions against you. Yeah. The problem is, if he doesn't get the early lead, you know, both Fizz and Yasuo are going to be crying for jungle attention. That's true. Well, top lane Yasuo it is and mid Fizz after all, though it is Ignite for Xiao Wei Xiao. No double TP here, but bit of knockup synergy. Fizz ulti, Alistair's basically entire kit going to be there. Team Impulse. A lot of assassins, a lot of playmaking. Yeah, uh, they're going to have to use this invisibility really well because yep. Ziggs versus uh, Fizz, if Ziggs starts to get an upper hand and he can start shoving, he would never stop shoving. And it's true. Fizz will be at his turret taking damage and also being denied CS. All right, so looking for Rush to relieve some pressure in these matchups, but now that you've gotten a look at the team comps, let us know who you think is going to go and win this game. Tweet hashtag T8win or hashtag TIPwin to at LOL Esports. Let us know who's going to start their season off with a win here in game one. Game four of the day. Reggie's excited. <laughs> I'm excited. Here we go, guys. Game four, week one. It's going to be fun. Reggie permanently excited for the LCS. Always. I love it. All right. So the other thing about uh, Impulse is that I guess we shouldn't be really be surprised by their heavy melee comp here. This is a squad that once they get their hands on Sivir, they love running things like this where they can just stampede over you. We'll see just how much stampeding can happen in this game. Meanwhile, teammate have their work cut out for them. Cali Trolls may be the man making the calls, but Apollo says that Slushy is the one they're going to have to work, watch out for on this six. I'd say if I were to choose a star of their lineup, it would probably be Slushy, just because he's been the, mo like the more consistent player on their team and always seems to do well uh, regardless of like their situation. But Cali Trolls was definitely more no uh, noticeable in terms of his shot calling rather than his actual play. Well, the Cali Troll shot calling up against a bunch of assassins, a bunch of playmaking, and an invisible jungler. Mm -hmm. It's the one thing that's going to tax you a little bit as a player watching the map when you can't even see the entire enemy team. <laughs> well, I feel like a lot of the shot calling for Team 8 should be uh, to try and pull Team Impulse into jungle fights. If you have a corridor, then you can use Zig zone control. You can use Gnar, also a great deal of zone control. Uh, to try and hamper this fully forward-facing rush town yeah. uh, <laughs> impulse team that's yeah. just going to try and zerg you. Well, we'll see if teammate right. can pop Get the creep tubers. Early. All right, invade towards the rev up. Rush going to be starting solo on this one. Makes sense. And I in mean. comes Cali Trolls and Dodo Rush on the way out. Impact is staying. Um, rush. All right. Despite to kill the camp off, that's what they stayed for. Impact, this is his flash for it. Good invade by teammate. Yeah, looks like... Uh, oh man, Adrian's in a bad spot. Rush was the one to get the experience for it. Porpoise still has his smite. Uh, jungle vi invade, fairly successful though. I mean, talked about how much of this Impulse squad early game relies on Evelyn. They're trying to get her behind. Uh, she's not level two and did burn her smite. Now, the big difficulty, though, is that you have a flashless Yasuo <laughs> up against a Rek'Sai jungle, and Nar's no slouch in this either. I feel like Impact's life going to be hard, but he's already starting out incredibly aggressive. He's level two at the start, and Kalidro's nearly dead. 
Oh, let's see how he uses this knockup as well. Kylie Choi going to give him a lot of room, so probably won't be able to land it. But as you say, poor ha! Um, <laughs> Sorry. Impact is the best. He got me. That's true. Uh, so, Porpoise, as we mentioned, Rek'Sai's level 3 gank kit. She has everything that she could possibly want for a gank. Now, Rush definitely knows this. Um, however, I don't think he has much of a choice. Second potion just running out there, so probably going to have to head back to base. And Porpoise could have gone with a move down bottom. I feel like that's a little bit of a missed opportunity. However, since he didn't get the full camp when they invaded, ah, he didn't hit his level three. Mm. So no gap closer means no gank, and Kali Trolls is just going to have to deal with impact by taking a beating. And all that happens, Kali Trolls pops the shield, and impact doesn't even take damage in the matchup, but he's pushed in. And Rex is on the way down, but going through a ward doing mm -hmm. so. Right before Rush recalled, able to drop his trinket ward in the river, protect his lane, uh, that's shoving up. Both of Impulse's lanes on the sides here, uh, shoving in at the same time. So since they just saw Rexay at the dragon, Sivir, who obviously always likes to shove, going to continue shoving up on that top side. And Rush is going to side swipe Porpoise here. He's got a red buff, though. Yeah, Rush forced to pop W to get out. So Rush is the kind of guy that will take a fight whenever he sees the enemy jungler. However, you are running a Fizz. Fizz does not have early game lane control. So Slushy, having shoved the lane in, was able to provide support for the jungler. And even though Rush did get the jump and he had a bit of a damage advantage, not able to continue the fight uh, because of that mid lane control. Yeah, I mean, you saw Shao Wei Shao try to take a trade, and Slushy was like, bombs in your face, enjoy the trade, homie, and Shao Wei Shao having a really hard time in this fight. Right. The big advantage of the long-range shoving is that you get to build up a minion wave. So whenever the melee champion tries to go all-in on you like that, you've got a ton of minions around you attacking him. So he had cannon minion plus a bunch of ranged minions, yeah. and even Fizz with his passive is not able to tank up all those minions with the Zig's auto-attack. Couple of nice trades, though, all the same. Oh, what a great hook on Adrian. But meanwhile, a fight in the mid lane. The satchel charge knocks Rush around. Flash used onto Evelyn to stay safe. Just damage everywhere. But teammates getting the better of every single trade. Yeah, I mean, Rush is trying to tip the favor, uh, tip the scales in favor of the melee uh, assassin, which has to go all in. So you just return with ganks. However, Slushy doing a good job controlling the wave and Porpoise hovering around to protect him so that they can continue to bully the Fizz, oh. keep him down in CS, and try and avoid the snowball. Yeah, well, the mid lane snowball is definitely going the way of teammate, but as you watch this top lane two on two, this one's close, but the bottom lane one on one is really far in favor of impact. The flashless Yasuo in a long lane beats up Cali Trolls, dodges all the ganks, Rush and Impact together, really making sure this one-on-one -on -one is incredibly one-sided. Yeah, it was it was just so funny how the early invade changed all of the lanes because while Rush used his smite on the Wraith, Impact was still standing next to it, so he caught a bit of the experience. And then when he got down to lane quicker, he used that experience to completely bully Cali, not let him back inside. And this poor Nar just unable to get any meaningful damage down. Impact really managing the lane excellently here. And really, with Porpoise's uh, efforts all being in the mid lane, he's pushed around Rush and Shao Shao a little bit, but Impact is still getting that free farm. So, advantages in different lanes overall. A gold lead for Team Impulse, and Maple Street still on the backside of this one. Adrian, only level four, cannot turn invulnerable. Apollo just safe still. Yeah, fairly even on CS as well. A uh, few more here possible for Maple to pick up. Yeah, Try it is a potion ahead. lead for Impulse, though. Apollo has not had to use his potion just yet. Maple's already low and has chugged through all three of his potions at the start. So the rest of this lane, I feel like, is going fairly awkwardly. We're right about the BF sword timing as well for Apollo. After this wave, I would like to see Impulse back up and just get a big item spike for the Sivir. Can yeah. you push around? So. I also like what uh, Rush has done here with the invade with Evelyn. Um, he's able to get some deep wards down on the top side of the map, and he can spend the rest of his time down bottom. Because mid lane, uh, it's very difficult for them to pull something off, especially now Slushy being level 8. So if he hovers around bottom, you hover around your lane with the advantage. If anything happens down bottom, Impact is going to be able to carry the two versus two very easily. Yeah. So it's a really safe spot 
uh, for him to hover around, and they can easily turn this into early dragon control. Neutral objective control is what you want when you have no range. This impulse squad has almost no range at all. It's a yeah. bunch of melees and sivir. So they're all about this neutral uh, objective control, try and pull teammates out away from turrets later in the game. All right, so the sooner they start going for the Dragons, the sooner Team Impulse can try to close the game out with Dragon 5 if it really does go this way. Uh, the turret, bit of damage dealt. Impact still has to be safe. So, Freak. Yeah. Back uh, during playoffs, we were talking about how um, Rush does not really like to you know, feed into the Cinder Hulk meta. And we're like, you know what? That's no problem. Uh, Impact can build it on Shivana, and they can have a Cinder Hulk tank. Uh, turns out, he can also build it on Yasuo. And oh they can a Cinder Hulk tank Yasuo player. Sun, yeah, Sunfire Yasuo seems to be the item choice here. He's got the uh, the Bombi Cinder. He's also got a Brawler's Glove, so he's a bit confused with his item builds, but I guess that's working. Meanwhile, it is going to be Warrior Enchant Rush. As we talk about who's going to be the tank here, definitely not the jungler. Why would you ever do that impulse? Xiao Xiao gets the hop over. Blue buff for him. We go back to the holding pattern of the lane. 600 gold lead from the laning phase. Quick push by Slushy. Will not deny much as Fizz will return to lane. A lane swap, though, does come through. Teammate put their dual lane down to the bot side. Kelly Trolls does not have teleport, though. Something that Impulse should be well aware of. Nice little combo to Kelly Trolls as well. Some good damage. Good dodge. Kelly going to try and move up in the lane. Paul are going to continue to shove it back. Hmm, interesting. Will they call over extra support? Shao Shao actually in the mid lane, not having too difficult of a time. If you have Fizz, you know, only down a few CS like this, it's a pretty good win for uh, Team Impulse. That early neutral objective, though, being taken away is fairly big for their overall game plan. And I like this move by Teammate because the AD carry left up top. Uh, even though, like you said, there's no teleport, yeah. Uh, they take advantage of the recall timer of Xiao Wei Xiao, knowing there's no mid laner to collapse. Really good timing and uh, just a good mid game call there from Team 8 to be aware of the yeah. recall timings. It's just odd to me what Team Impulse is even really doing in this game. They oh, yeah. sent the dual lane back to the top lane after recalling. BF Sword Sivir, okay, that's strong. Turret pressure is maybe the game, but they haven't gotten any turret damage down. Adrian roamed the bot lane, but not in time to stop Dragon. And it just feels like the advantages of Impulse aren't yet doing anything, and I want to see when they do actually turn it on. Teammate right now, the first team to actually make some plays this game. All right. What they're going to turn on is the Sivir ulti. She's level 7 now. If they join up, they see anybody out of position, uh, they'll just commence Operation Rundown. Well, here's somebody out of, not exactly out of position. Oh! Wow, that was nice. Porpoise in a bad way. First blood goes over to Adrian. Rush once again invading, and it's going well. Knocks him out of the uh, tunnel there. And now they've got a cornered Cali Trolls. Support comes up from all sides for both teams. Oh, flash to the ulti, but a lantern not going to be grabbed, actually. Cali Trolls, the hop, so it gets him out. But still, in comes Xiao Wei. Xiao, the damage is going to be good, but wow, Zig's damage is going to be massive as well. Impact doing what he can with this wind wall, just hiding in the back side of it. Buys a bit of time, but still, a couple of kills turned back around. 2-1 to one overall for Impulse. All right, Rek'Sai's coming in, but, you know, a little bit late there. He just died. Can't respawn fast enough. And Impulse exit the crime scene. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of hard to tell where the game's going when you got the early bomby Cinder. Uh, he can't build the uh, Cinder Hulk because he has no smite, but, yeah, the Sunfire will come in for Impact. And he's going to be uh, the semi-tank for the squad. Yeah. I guess it gives him better wave clear. I'm just... First time I've seen this, it, it's very confusing to me, but we'll see what happens. Porpoise still with some scuttler control. 1,500 gold lead for Impulse overall, and so far, Xiao Xiao's crazy antics of picking Fizz blind has gone pretty well. Losing lane, bit of extra jungle pressure, but keeping up in CS, and he got an assist. I feel like Impulse can just create chaos in this game. They're going to have split pushing semi tank Yasuo, split pushing uh, Fizz almost online here, since Xiao Xiao's actually had a pretty good early game. Yeah. Uh, he'll get to the point very quickly here um, that he can be a side lane threat as well. And they can just split push 1-3-1 one, one, and then use the Sivir speed boost to try and catch somebody out uh, who's a little bit slow on the rotation. Once you grab one kill, you know, chain that into objectives and Impulse can pull it off. 
They definitely can. It is the team with the lead right now, and so the test is kind of on teammate then. How good's your shot calling and how good is Slushy right now? The swap onto Apollo, the hook as well. Got really friends. nicely done. He does have friends, but are they gonna be enough? The answer is yeah, Maple Street gonna be going down, turned into tarmac on this one, and now Dota Wade also gonna fall. Porpoise stuck under his turret in a one versus four, now a one versus five. Goodbye, double kill for impact. Out he goes, taking the turret, and now the turret itself gonna fall as well. Yes, they do indeed thrive in chaos. You pick a fight with Team Impulse, you better be ready for everybody to join. The speed at which they collapse is so, so quick. No answer here from Team 8 besides the shove and uh, shove mid and top. They do actually get one turret, so. Yeah, but that's one, one turret one. equalized. Yeah, but look at all these waves getting pushed in, all the kills picked up. Impulse certainly getting better of that bargain. Teammate doing what they can to stay alive, but again, a TP list. Cali trolls the team not ready for that dive. Yeah, I mean, Urgot here still was sitting on the tier, trying to stack that up. He needs to get the point where he can transform to Muramana. Just hold on, let the zigs stall out a bit, and be a bit safer. They use all the crowd control at once there, though. Apollo, as soon as he gets let go, immediate ult activation. Everybody comes down. There's the teleport from Impact. And he's got extra life to be able to tank the turret as well. So might as well go for the first kill. Roam from Shower Shower, not necessary. Um, but just in case there was an answer teleport. Guess they don't really have the closest timers on uh, Kali Troll's teleport. It's okay though, all's well. Impulse, they lose a turret, but I could say that fight definitely worth it. And as I said, on a 3,000 gold lead, Dragon respawns in a minute and 10 seconds. Seems like creating the chaos and taking fights is enough to allow Impulse to knock some turrets down, but without any potential uh, regular sieging style. You mentioned earlier that neutral objectives would be a pretty important point. Tend to agree this Dragon in a minute going to be big for Impulse. We'll see if they set it up well. Yeah. Right now, Rush already putting a good number of wards down with that Sight Stone. Doing a good job to set up at neutral. Yeah, I don't see them giving away any more Dragons. Uh, they should be in position to fight it. Here goes uh, the one 3 one that we're looking for, though. Uh, Shao Shao down bottom with the blue buff. He actually hasn't gone back to purchase in quite a while, so yeah. might want to do that before he extends much further. He's right about at Merlin Amakan money, 1,500 gold on Shao Wei Shao. All right. 24 seconds on Dragon. He's actually past the time where Recall will let him get in in time, so a small window of no member. Huh. No nope. TP on Impact either. It seems like Impulse really not looking at Dragon just yet. Guess not, but with two members from Team 8 showing top, neither of which having teleport, yeah, could be back on the table. So <laughs> You're right about that. This shuffleboard game here. The tables have been flipped in this one. Team 8, once again, blue buff to Slushy right on time for that Dragon if it does end up going on the table. He also is heading down right now, whereas Maple Street was about to stay top lane, so now comes all five members. Cali Trolls does have teleport on this Gnar from the bot lane. Gets the wave cleared out. A ton of deep wards, though, still in teammates' jungle. Going to make it very hard for them to collapse on TIP unnoticed. Dragon started at 5,000 health. A couple of wards over the back, and that should be easy peasy. 6% extra damage for Impulse. All right, so far, Organized Chaos has been pretty good for the red team here. Their first game of the split, and Team Impulse playing exactly the way they used to play. <laughs> Rush goes crazy. Impact's incredibly good at League of Legends. Shao Shao just does random stuff that tends to work. Yeah, very curious to see if he actually even ends up upgrading that Bami Cinder. Just been sitting on it for quite a while. Dashing through the minion line consistently, he does get a decent amount of magic damage output from it to help his yeah. shove. I want to see where uh, Rush goes with the rest of his items as well. Warrior Enchant into Ninja Tabby and Sight Stone. See if he gets any more damage on this or just more tank. Yeah, Eve is one of those champions that you can actually build anything that you want on her, and it's not terrible. Yeah, yeah I can see it yeah. thinking so. You're like, hmm, I'm going to get something that's garbage on her. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> so I, my personal favorite for Jungle Evelyn is actually to go with the Magus upgrade. Because it's just it feels so efficient, uh, comparing all oh, the yeah. different jungle upgrades. 
uh, and her AP damage output is, is very comparable to her physical. So I like doing that and then going into a lot of cooldown reduction. Uh, Frozen Heart is great on her. Oh, yeah. Anytime you have an, a, a champion who's constantly smashing a key, you want cooldown reduction so she can get the most value um, out of spamming a Q. You can either go Frozen Heart or even Frozen Fist since her kit combines with Sheen procs very well as well. Extremely efficient. Let's see if they go for a tower dive, though. Everybody's in position. They've got several ultimates. Well, a lot of poke on this. Alistair pops the ulti to himself to try to stay alive. Will do so, but the wave is cleared. No dive possible. Ult for ult, though. I got to imagine Slush is a bit more important in team fights. As Kalitrol shows up the top lane, Impact is here to defend this. Seen by a ward on the way up. I feel like he's going to pick a fight here. He's very confident against Kali, even in mega form. Maybe not two versus one. All right, forcing impact of flash away takes a fair bit of damage. Got the knockup, but now Dodo caught up by Rush and Apollo forced himself to flash out. Box comes in, still goes down to the boomerang blade. Maple Street only with so much damage to fire back with. That's one of those cross map movements that we're talking about. Sivir is perfect at picking people off when you have so many threats. Tip send their split pusher impact right up to the top lane. He draws attention. There's not sufficient ward coverage to make that journey for team eight. And boom, they pick up a kill on the support. Rush and Apollo combining to grab that one. Yeah, good luck tracking Rush around the map. Regular wards aren't going to cut it for you. Going to see Evelyn on a camp or with a pink ward. Good luck doing either of those with teammate kind of controlling, sorry, not able to get into the back side of the map. Nice knock up there. Probus taking a whole bunch of damage. Life keeps getting harder for the blue side. And teammate, a team that narrowly missed the playoffs. Having a hard time against a team that finished better than them last split. All right, Shao Shao picking a fight of his own inside the red jungle. They have everybody coming to back him up and teleport ready now for impact. The only thing they might not want to do right now is immediately go for a tower dive. So jungle fight commence. The fight commence. Apollo taking a ton of damage for this one. Got a red buff. Heal used to keep Rush alive. In comes Maple Street. Takes him down. A combo from Adrian buys some time. In comes Impact. The knockup is there. Xiao Wei Xiao now firing on all cylinders. Taking out as many as he can. Oh, nice Zig Zolt picks up a couple, but Cali Trolls not in a great way anymore. Impact putting out a whole bunch, but the Naralty is massive. Hits two. Hops the wall. A triple kill for Salushi. Apollo called it the carry of the team. What a ridiculously unorganized fight from both squads. <laughs> Starting off multiple points of combat. We'll probably have to take a look at that replay, but Rush got chunked out really early. Apollo was almost out of mana and really low on health. Yeah. Regardless though, teammate, the solo laners come out king. They're able to take down the turret as well. Slushy got a lot of mana back um, during the walk down. And they're able to take the turret here. So some global gold in there for Team 8. All right, so here's the beginning of it. Yeah, this was where Rush gets chunked. I guess Maple Street just locks on him. Yeah, there it is. And it's Warrior Enchant uh, Eve plus the knockup there. So yeah, not a lot of tank stats there. Apollo pops the heal. While Morella Namakon's actually uh, heal reduction was on him. So less health on Apollo himself. A nice setup there for impact. Oh, Slushy's landing bombs down here on the bottom side out of your screen, by the way. Lands two bombs straight onto Apollo, takes him out of the fight. Extremely efficient use right there. And then just walks in Kali with the perfect time to go Mega. Yeah. And lands the Nar ultimate. Impulse not respecting how much they had gotten hurt and the fact that Team 8 could be right around the corner. Mega Nar coming in just in time to save the fight that I don't think they would have won without those stuns, but. Yeah. You expect Mega Nar, Mega Nar to happen at some point during a big fight, and it did. The double kill at the very end. Six to nine. Team eight right back in this one. A very small lead. Turrets practically equal. Dragons are equal. Next one comes up in 40. So this is something that we see a lot from Team Impulse. When they get the early lead, they start to overreach. Too far into the jungle there, and they gave a lot back. You have to be very careful in the current state of League of Legends about that type of mentality because there are so many comeback mechanics now. Yep. They've been slowly buffed over and over over the past few years that if you make too many mistakes like that, it's very easy for squads uh, to make those full comebacks, especially when you're sitting on a Ziggs. Luden's Echo is complete. Such a ridiculously strong item for Ziggs. Oh, really high Ugh. impact ultimates, plus he's got extremely strong poke before the fight. He's pretty much bringing everything to the uh, team fight here. So if they can get a good corridor fight, uh, Slushy's damage is probably going to be off the charts. Here we go. Flank incoming, though. 
Xiao Wei Xiao in rush, looking for Slushi, who spots them, knocks them around. Uh-oh, this flank's not going to do much at all. Rush rushing to his doom. He's going to go down, but here comes the re-engage. A ton of damage from Impact and everyone else. A double for Apollo. Gnarl into the wall. Doesn't do much to Adrian, and it's just cleanup crew now. The double ADs crushing absolutely everybody. Only Kelly trolls left alive. It's so funny to watch Apollo during Impulse games because everybody else on Team Impulse just rushes straight forward into the fight, and the, the opponents just have to try and deal with all of these threats that are coming melee range, yet Apollo always has this leisurely walk where he's just constantly auto-attacking from the outside, and Sivir stacks up so much AoE, he gets a, you know plenty of DPS enough to win that fight, and that's going to be a really easy Baron for Team Impulse. So the Bombies, Cinder, Yasuo, 6, 1, and 5. Absolutely great. Yeah, that is the one spot where teammate do not want to fight. They want to fight in those corridors to try and use walls to their advantage. Even so, look at the power of Slushy at the very beginning here. It gets off a lot of poke, but they're all grouped up. Three-man knockup. There's the Alistar going in for extra damage. Yasuo gets the combo. Apollo with so much Sivir AoE on top of it. And Slushy goes down. So with the Ziggs down, yeah, yeah Zerg Squad oh, cleans up. Oh, here we are at it again. I got a dragon, a whole bunch of kills right away. Drag picked up by the red team, two more kills picked. Slushy gonna make it the third. Cali Trolls know where to go. And Porpoise, the last man standing. Oh. The Void Beast goes down. The a consecutive, uh, what, four for one and then five for zero team fight. Yeah, we didn't really get to see the setup for that fight, but that's exactly what we are talking about. They want to draw Team 8 over to the neutral objectives, fight them in the open here. And it's Team 8 who actually are the ones who started it off. Uh, There's the initial knockup. Maple Street is gone before he gets to get off a single auto attack. Slushy cornered in the back of the Dragon Pit means that no DPS available for Team 8. And it looks like Impulse is going to be able to Zerg this one home, take down a bunch of outer turrets, and mm -hmm. stack up all of that global gold. Man, you can see in that last fight how close the battles can be if the AoE Wombo doesn't quite work for Team 8. Mm. It's, or sorry, for Impulse. Like, it's weird to say that Yasuo Eve Fizz is like a wombo combo team, and yet we keep seeing like <laughs> these four-man ults hit everybody and chunk the entire health bars. But similarly, teammate with this Ziggs here, with this Gnar, are almost able to turn those fights around. One positioning change, and these fights could go either way next time around. Teammate need order. They need order in the battlefield. They have to set up the lines with Corpus and Kali on the front, uh, keep Slushy protected in the back at all costs. If they can get a NAR ultimate, just one NAR ultimate can buy them enough time for Slushy to get off a full combo. Right, we'll see if they can land those combos, because now we're at a 13,000 gold deficit at 25 minutes. Massive advantage for Team Impulse to start their season off 1-0 if they can close it out. Yeah, it's really, really late in the game to try and pull it off. Team Impulse at this point are just so strong. They have so much cash. They can run right over Team 8. Looks like they're looking to do that. Take out all the outer turrets first as they swing up top. Shall I shall poked around? Two short champions together. I'm, s I'm actually kind of disappointed he didn't do anything with the Bomby Cinder or go like, yeah. you know, semi tank. But shout, uh, Impact there, just holding on to it the entire game and going into a more standard Yasuo build. I think he misclicked it. And like thought he was gonna be a Cinderhulk champion. Like of the reasons why this item ah, got bought. Ah, that never happens. <laughs> AP Vi says otherwise. I'm thinking what is what is it at? What is it next to in the shop? Nah. It costs a thousand gold to buy it in, in one shot, so it's slightly less than zeal. Yeah, pretty big chunk. Alright. Well, because they have everybody cornered up in the base, obviously, uh, all of the jungle is Team Impulse territory, able to take away the blue, and they can just keep teammate bottled up. They don't have to take any reckless trades here. Let's try and grab the last outer turret, and you know, draw teammate out into the battlefield once another one of those neutral objectives with high importance spawns up. Remember too, teammate fans, this is uh, teammate practicing or playing with the AD carry that they have not been practicing with uh, yeah, for quite much. a while. Um, that hasn't been, you know, the biggest of impacts in this game, though. So, yeah, definitely have some things to work on. Yeah, um, I actually ran into Nian uh, yeah. today. He's actually in the house and she's on his team. 
But uh, yeah, he said they got some scrims in with Maple. He said they played with them last week. Mm -hmm. uh, they said they got they did pretty well in practice, but couldn't get a lot of great practice partners. Um, and you know, unfortunately, the the mid game really turned away from them. The early start was fine. They had a couple of good team fights. They got first dragon, but yeah, two really big fights in a row, and Impulse just exploded ahead. And, you know, if you misposition a bit in fights, that'll happen to you. Uh, so Rush has gone with a cooldown reduction heavy build on Evelyn. Definitely approved. Very, very efficient stat for her. Plus, he's bringing all of the auras to boot. So she doesn't scale tremendously well. And he's bringing a lot of team value uh, with the pick here after they've transitioned out of the phase where her invisibility is the biggest thing that she's bringing to the team. Now he's going to bring plenty of auras for the team fights when they do actually have to crack into the base. There goes the split push, though. Finally claims the last outer turret for Team Impulse. And their lead is about as big as they need it to be. Oh my god, poor Cali Trolls bounce housed around but gets the lantern just in time to get away. On the same turret drops in the top lane thanks to Apollo's efforts. Six turrets to two here, Impulse. Very far ahead, 17,000 gold, 29 minutes in. Yep, so they can easily just wait for... Oh, looks like they're going to swing down bottom. Shower Shower going to go purchase. All right, so teammate need a small miracle if they want to come back in this game. Probably several of them, I feel like. They have some Wombo power. There's really not a lot of durable champions, theoretically... Fizz, Sivir, and Yasuo could die if they just get ridiculously hit up by Nar and Ziggs, but it would require some really rare circumstances for Team Ape to have a really good chance here. Team Impulse, the question for me is, imagine they don't have a 17,000 gold lead. What should they do to close this game out? Because if they're just trying to wait for organized chaos to keep working, that's we've seen it backfire even in this game. Yeah, looking further down the field for Team Impulse. We were wondering if we would see, you know, much change for them once they got back after the yeah. split, but... It's actually the pretty same. much what we yeah, pretty much yeah. what we expected. Uh, a lot of rush down melee level uh, squad. They had a champs to the roster at least. Yeah, Alistair and Evelyn are pretty much new, and Top Yasuo as well. Fizz in the middle for Shaowei Shao. If as much as Shaowei Shao likes Yasuo, he's not even the best one on this team. <laughs> Impact definitely a very good game thus far. All right, there's one. Uh, Baron should be fairly trivial for Team Impulse as well, and they may even just keep Xiao Xiao down bottom uh, to provide pressure there at the bottom. Inhibitor, waiting for the Scott squad. I also like how Impulse, you know, picking up Alistar is really important for them because sometimes they do run into the problem of ending games, and yeah. ending games through um, these inhibitor turrets. Alistar is a great point man. When you run up against this roadblock, you've got a whole bunch of gold, you're ready to go for the tower dive. Just send Adrian in, head first, Sivir boosted Alistar, and they yeah. can swarm through the base. Well, thankfully for Team Impulse, they might not need to do that, just in case it was too risky for their likings. Baron has gone down 31 minutes in. Zigzult could not steal from Slushy, though a nice attempt all the same. One last recall to heal up and buy our last items. This could be a game-winning push. Vamp Scepter for Apollo. Zonia's and most of Lich Bane now in for Xiao Wei Xiao. Quick Silver Sash even for Impact, just to make sure Exhaust doesn't hurt him too badly and no knockups go too poorly. Uh, no Urgot swaps either. And now it looks like... The attempt for the final push. Baron buff is on, only inhibitor turrets left. Dragon 5 way too far away for that to be a real objective here. So Impulse, how good are you at knocking down in inhibitor turrets with a 19,000 gold lead and Baron buff? Well, let's check it out with the split push. Baron up all three waves. Let's see how patient they are. So looks like a 1-3-1. One, one. Solo lanes in the top and bottom lanes. Basically, the goal here for Team Impulse is to draw out the Ziggs ultimate if they have enough pressure. It's on cooldown right now, so they can push heavily on these turrets and try to get some damage done. Shao Shao making work down bottom. It looks like Apollo's going to get a nice chunk out mid. Yeah, they get a bit of time there. Corbus going to go for the knockup. Apollo will spell shield it up. Corbus overextended. The stun comes in. There's a the several T as well. And in the back line they go. Slushy forced out. In comes Impact. Takes down one. He's going to take down two. Fizz gets the kill on this one. Dodo forced to run. Hook's not going to matter. Rush gets his third. Kills going everywhere. Every single one on Impulse got one kill except for Adrian. 
and he's left alone with only three on this game. But middle inhibitor goes down. This could be the game winning push. Two minions left. Maple Street alone to defend this one. In comes Xiao Wei Xiao, nearly onto the fountain. Not much Maple can do. Turret number one goes down. Adrian sets up impact. He's gonna live with that <laughs> shield just barely. Maple Street still on the fountain. He's trying. He's getting what he can. Urgot gets the kill onto Alistair. GG 1 0 on the season for Team Impulse. Very strong start for them. And again, they didn't give anything away to other teams either. Who are also looking at, you know, maybe seeing a new face from Impulse, any sort of new strategies. Well, you saw some of the new champions, I suppose. There were three new pickups here yep. that to me were a bit surprising. I would expect Impulse comes into this season firing as hard as they can. They said, yeah, top Yasuo, jungle Evelyn, and, and support Alistair. These are the new things we've learned so far, guys. Uh, That's what they bring out tomorrow. That is out. a good point. I feel like the Evelyn is going to be a uh, point of contention. She's not hidden anymore. Further along for these guys. Just because it works so well with the uh, amount of aggression that this team plays yeah. with. It's the, a totally impulse champion. Pretty much the exact champion that you want to work with. <laughs> All right. Well, Gratz impulse one to zero teammate. You know, I feel like they would be okay with this game. They realize they're not playing with their intended starting roster. Maple Street, he's got one more game in him in the North American LCS. At least this split, unless something weird happens. They do intend for Nien to play for them. Nien is a vocal player. It would, he would affect their shot calling. He would affect how they play the game as well. Um, these guys have said a lot about how they expect Nien to be a big upgrade for them, uh, mentality and play-wise. So uh, maybe teammate only looking to steal wins away, and they're not too uh, upset about losing games like this. All right. <laughs> if you're going to be okay with dropping the first game, definitely the way to do it. Team Impulse, though. Once again, Silver Comp. Glad to show it off. Yeah. And well executed. I got to say, the, the tower dives were awesome. Yeah, exactly. Like, you got to ask, how much time were they really spending playing together before this split started, right? Rush was in Korea up until fairly recently. Uh, I follow his Twitter, so I see him, like, post, oh, I'm streaming again. And, like, it wasn't long ago he said, now I'm streaming in NA. So, you know, they've only been together so much time now for the summer split. I wonder how much this team will continue to improve as a unit. I mean, just in spring, like, you saw the visible increase in team play as time went on for Impulse. So if that trend continues, they're going to be even scarier later on in the split. All right. Well, we'll see what happens now. Either way, to get the full breakdown on that game,